Hey guys, how's it going? Alex Augert here from Bra Productions, and today I'm going to show you how to get that really cool looking film effect inside of After Effects. How to properly make your footage look cinematic, I guess, post-wise. So I am in After Effects CS6. Uh, it should not matter. Uh, this applies to all versions of After Effects, Mac and PC. So you should be good to go. So I have this shot here um of a short i shot if you want to check out the short an annotation should pop up now check it out uh, we had a lot of fun shooting it giant nutsack kind of uh giving it away uh, of course this doesn't look very good it's very uh flat very you know bland uh it just doesn't look very cinematic so we're going to do a couple of things to fix that but first i want to talk about what you need to do when you shoot there's four things i recommend looking at when shooting that's going to help you tremendously in post to make your shots look more cinematic uh, you need to shoot at 24 frames a second if your camera will allow you to. Pay attention to the composition. Look at uh, how actors are placed. Look up the rule of thirds on Google. Pay attention to lighting. Um, look at lighting, how it's affecting your shot and what's the motivation behind it. Um, and then have motivation for your shooting style. Um, if you're going to shoot handheld and it's some like war scene, do a handheld. It wouldn't look right if it was on some fancy slider or a tripod. Everything you do shooting wise needs to be motivated for the scene and the emotion in the scene. First is going to be a quick letterbox. Um, I shot this in 16.9, which is widescreen HD, uh, 1080, 24 frames a second. Um, and we're going to make it 235, which is like an anamorphic style um, that you get off using anamorphic lenses and a uh, cinescope style. You know, to do that, we're going to go up into layer, solid, we're going to make it black, uh, make comp size, and click OK. Then we are going to go to layer, new, solid again. And where it says height, we're going to put in 816. Now, this is for a, uh, a 1080 comp. Uh, and as you can see in the parentheses, 235. So we will click that. Now click the toggle switches and go to your black solid one and click alpha inverted matte on the black solid two. And now you have a perfectly aligned 235 letterbox. It's already looking better. Now, if you need to adjust your shot, just click your footage, click P and adjust the uh, the Y thing just to kind of line up your shot you can kind of cheat your composition here as well which is pretty nice one thing you might want to do is to stabilize your footage sometimes the shakiness of using an older handy cam or something that you might be shooting on kind of takes away from that feel inside of after effects cs 5.5 and cs 6 i have what's called warp stabilizer and i'm going to show you how to do that right now if you don't have that you can do it the old school way and there should be an annotation right now for an earlier tutorial i did on how to stabilize without warp stabilizer we're going to go right into it warp stabilizer really simple literally it just analyzes it it stabilizes it and there's usually not too much adjustment i have to do so i'm going to let that do its thing it's taking too long for the sake of this tutorial, so I'm just going to leave it off for now. There's just a subtle jitter in the shot that I want to get rid of. So the biggest thing you can do on top of this letterbox is color correction. Um, I just recently made a tutorial about how to color correct in After Effects, so more in-depth, general kind of look at that. Check out that tutorial, another annotation just about now. Um, but, we'll, you know, we'll just make it a little simple. We'll go to Layer adjustment layer we'll click enter on the keyboard rename it to cc for color correction we'll drop it below the letterbox make sure you always have your letterbox on top so your color correction doesn't affect the blacks and tints them a different color because you want them dead black one thing we should talk about is latitude latitude is your stops negative to plus in your shot you know how much detail can you see in the highlights and in the shadows um, the more the latitude, the better off you are. That's why the Aria Alexa, the Red, even the new C300, um, they all have a very high latitude, which makes them ideal for shooting because you have more detail that you can play around with in color correction to get the perfect image. Now, if you're shooting on a DSLR, I highly recommend Technicolor CineStyle. It's a picture style, as you can see right here, that... Um, dramatically increases your latitude. It makes your image ugly, 
but that's what color correction is for. Um, it gives you more information in your blacks and more information in your highlights, giving you more data to use. Say you don't have a fancy camera or a Canon DSLR and you're shooting on a normal handy cam. Uh, you know, you're not going to be able to get that much information back, but you can do a little. So we're going to go to an effect, color correction, uh, where is it? Brightness and contrast. And we're going to bring the contrast down. Not too much to where it washes it out like that, but just enough, just enough to get some detail back. You're mainly looking at the blacks. The blacks are going to be what is affected the most. Kind of like that. It's the only negative seven, not too much of a difference. Um, then we're going to go to curves and we're going to adjust that. And you're going to adjust your Luma how you want it. Um, you know, depending on your shot, this is a little bit more dramatic. So the whole shot will probably be darker as a whole. And then of course, play around with your color. Uh, this is just Kind of the same thing I talked about in the color correction tutorial, but for the sake of this, I'll go ahead and do what I would have done in the video. Um, let's see. Maybe a magenta highlights. Get a little green going on. I don't know. Of course, this is where you just play around with it as much as you want until you get the feel that you're feeling. Maybe adjust the blue a little bit. Just make it a little cooler. So there's that. You can also go into effect, color correction, hue and saturation, and affect the saturation maybe. For this particular shot, I want a little bit more desaturated. You know, that's about the most you can do to looking, to making it look like film without actually shooting on film or with a really high-end digital cinema camera. Some things I recommend that I see people doing to try to achieve the film look is uh, a vignette and film grain. Now, a vignette sometimes works, and I'll show you how to do it now, uh, but I usually don't like it, and that's why I'm kind of downing it right now. All depends on your shots. Vignettes are usually good for wide shots, but when you come into close-ups, they kind of take away from the scene for me. We're going to go to an adjustment layer, again, under the letterbox. Go up to Effect, Color Correction, Curves, and we'll just bring this slightly down to about there. We will get the Ellipse tool out of the Max, <laughs> out of the Mask button by just holding on it, clicking that, double click the ellipse, and it'll make one right now. Now we'll go into the adjustment layer, mask, subtract, and then feather. And then you can adjust the opacity depending on how much of a vignette you actually want. Um, you know, kind of like that. Adds just kind of a stylistic effect. Now the other thing, film grain, I'm not really gonna go into because honestly, Film grain is not what you want to do to achieve the film look. It's only going to make your your image look crappy uh, because how film grain works is it's on certain exposures and it just it just won't work when you just apply it to the entire image digitally because uh, there already is digital grain because you're probably not shooting on a Alexa or a Red or something really fancy that has minimal grain or minimal noise, I mean. So you already kind of have noise and or grain uh, in your image. So don't worry about that. I just leave it how it is. That's about all I got for making a film kind of look. I typically do this on all the videos I shoot. I just like that cinematic style. It's very nice and I think it adds a lot of production value to your entire uh, film because it makes it look like you shot on a camera that you really didn't and that's pretty awesome to you know fake if you guys have any problems questions concerns um feel free to leave a video response or a comment um or even message me um and like always subscribe and if there's anything else i can help you guys with just feel free to leave a request in my inbox and i hope all of you have a great day see you next time guys